Hi, I'm Jonathan Pines from Rupert Neve Designs, and I'm here on the floor of the 2024 NAMM show, and I want to send a big shout out to our good friends at Gearspace. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about a new piece that we have that's really been causing quite a bit of a sensation, and people have a lot of questions about it. This is the Master Bus Transformer. One of the questions that we get from a lot of customers is, what's the difference between the Master Bus Processor, one of our most popular pieces that we ever made, and the new Master Bus Transformer? The short form answer of this is the Master Bus Processor is still the ultimate dynamics processor from Rupert Neve Designs and has the most dynamic control with compression, a wonderful built-in limiter, stereo field editor, and a couple of other tricks. The Master Bus Transformer, well, yes, it does have a comp uh, optical compressor and a Zener limiter in it, is really more about tone and vibe and color and character than dynamic control specifically. Let's take a quick tour of the Master Bus Transformer. On the input side, we have 12 dB of adjustable gain for to adjust drive, both up and down, and I'll explain a little bit more why later on. We have three high-pass filters on here, and I'll go through that because it's confusing to some customers. This one is strictly in the audio path and goes down to a low frequency of 15 hertz. Why so low? Because you can do, because with the cool equalizer, you can do the bump the low end, do the sharper dip off, trick that you would with, say, a Poltec. Uh, also, 15 hertz because EDM folks want to hear 20 and 25 hertz, but may want to clean up a tiny bit of subsonic stuff. Moving on, we have a very widely swept, very musical sounding equalizer. This is not for carving. This is for broad strokes. I want to make bigger low end. I want to sweeten it. I need to notch out a little bit of harshness of something. So very widely swept, very musically sounding, very accurate uh, corner frequencies. Um, one of the things that's been very exciting is this is a brand new compressor from us. It's actually a stereo optical compressor, but it does have fully variable release and two different ratios. In the low ratio, it's approximately 2 over 1. In the high ratio, it's approximately 5 over 1. Very adjustable threshold. Of course, lots of makeup gain. Of course, we have parallel compression or blend built in. And then what's that, uh, what's that high pass filter doing? It's in strictly in the side chain of the audio path so that you can make sure that instead of and with very bass heavy material, instead of having low frequency triggering the compressor or dominating the compression profile, you can use the sweep up the high pass filter, eliminate a certain amount of the low frequencies from the control path. So it's not taking away any low end whatsoever, it's just telling the compressor to look more at mid-range frequencies. Um, again, designed primarily for its color, character, and temperament, a little bit less so about pure dynamic control, but often a certain amount of that as well. This is really a fun thing on Drum Crush. I urge you guys to try it out and then check out what it can do. I urge all of you to. Um, following that, we have a width control. We have a width control with a neat little trick in there. So yes, you can spread it quite wide when you want, but most of the time when you're spreading something wide, what you don't want to spread is your low end. You still want your kick drum and your bass to hit in the center and provide solidity of the image. So you can sweep up the high pass filter, once again, only in the side chain of the width circuit, so that it's only spreading mid-range frequencies and above. So you can go for, say, really nice wide guitar effects, but still keep your rhythm section hitting hard in the middle. So very handy, very popular thing. Quick overview of why there are three high pass filters. Next up, we have a thing that all our customers have been asking, many of you on your forum have been asking for silk red and silk blue at the same time. Finally, we have it here with Super Silk. So you can independently adjust silk blue and silk red and the overall drive amount, and we added a Zener a drive limiter to that. So you have a soft clip circuit there with a Zener limiter, um, it's neatly stuck in there, and the ability to drive both silk and red and silk blue. And silk is often misunderstood by people. It's not distortion. We're not flipping a FET. Uh, we're not using a diode. Uh, it's not a stomp box. What it is is genuine musical harmonics that are generated by the music you put into it. Uh, one of the ways we do that is by saturating the output transformer. And one of the neat tricks that Rupert came up with is weighting it. So silk blue is predominantly low frequency harmonics. Silk red is predominantly mid and high frequency harmonics. And for the first time, you can control the blend of the two and use both at the same time. 
uh, following it is, of course, a hard bypass on it, and another plus or minus 12 dB, dB of gain, which we had an add extra section for that because silk is normally on the output transformers, so there's a whole nother section for that and more output transformers. The reason for that being you can develop so much gain through this that we need to be able to trim it back and control it for its drive to, say, uh, the ADD converter or the next piece of gear you're using. If you'd like to learn more about the Master Bus Transformer or find out where you can get one, uh, please check us out on rupertneve.com. I'm Jonathan Pines from the floor of the 2024 NAM show, and we love everyone at Gearspace, and we love hearing from you. Thank you very much.